Maybe I'm Casey, maybe I'm Casey, maybe I'm not. All right, very excited to have my friend Jason McIntyre, FS1 family and host of Fox Sports Radio, 10 to 1 Eastern on the weekends. Thanks for jumping on, J Mac. Hey, it's a lot of fun to be finally on the show. <laughs> I've seen it so many times. Uh, you're pretty dominant on Instagram, Joyce, so I definitely catch up with everything on there. You know, I try to get the content out there. That's what we're doing these days, content. Yeah. Um, so I spent one year as a Jets fan in my life. <laughs> uh, when my brother was with them, it was 2010, uh, which was a great year. It's my, it's one, I think it's my favorite year of his career, which people get really, Dolphins fans get really upset about, but like, Honestly, other than the 2007 when he won like Defensive Player of the Year and Walter Payton Man of the Year and all that, I mean they went to the AFC Championship game, so it was it was wonderful. So those happen often with the Jets, right? So. All right, so um, pretty memorable, yes. Yeah, <laughs> right. So I had a good experience as a Jets fan. You're a Jets fan, suffering Jets fan. Although yes. you're a very optimistic Jets fan. Listen, Joy, you have to be. Come on. I know I'm a New Yorker, born in New York, so I'm pessimistic about the Knicks, but I'm optimistic, weirdly, about the Jets. Uh, and, you know, you and I have never gone over this, but as a Dolphins fan, we are supposed to not like each other at all. Uh, you know, there's a couple teams I dislike greatly. <laughs> I don't use the word hate. I have the little kids uh, in the next room. Uh, Miami Dolphins, New York Giants, New England Patriots. Uh, and I will never forget the Dan Marino fake spike. I think it was in the mid early 90s. I was all geeked as a Jets fan. And I was like, whoa, like Dan Marino just totally shook me. I was like in a state of awe over Marino's greatness on that play. And Aaron Glenn was the cornerback who was beaten. It was devastating joy. Uh, but listen, long-suffering Jets fan. We had a good run with Sanchez, your guy, Mark Sanchez, obviously. Uh, and since then, it's been nothing. Right. And like... As a Dolphins fan, I understand the suffering of Jets fans. Although, you know, after Jason, I didn't hate Jets fans as much because I just like, I enjoyed my experience as a Jets fan. I still have Jason's uh, jersey, his, yeah. his 99 jersey uh, from the Jets. So I don't hate them as much. I used to really hate the Jets, but I will say, I as a Dolphins fan am, am generally never optimistic. And every time I am optimistic, yeah. I get disappointed. So I like to stay in my little box. You are like overly optimistic. And we had big Jets news this week. Yes. Jamal Adams. I am a big Jamal Adams fan. I think he's great. I would have paid Jamal Adams. Were you shocked? Because it kind of felt like it was inevitable. Yeah, I was. Yes, he's gone. Finally. Joy, yeah, listen, um, you can't be part of a team for three years and then out of the blue say, you know, I want to be traded or give me a massive contract. Like, dude, you're on your rookie deal. Like, Joy, we, we came to FS1 at about the same time, I think, right? 2016. Yep. And like, it would have been like after a year, hey, I need a new contract. Like, come on, show up, show me the money or get, get me out of here. Like, you can't do that in work, in sports media, anywhere. And he tried to pull this garbage. Now, people will say, well, Khalil Mack and Aaron Donald did the same thing. Time out. Those guys were defensive player of the year. Jamal Adams was not. Uh, and he's a safety. Like, safety's not even, what is it, maybe the third or fourth best most important position on defense. There's cornerback and there's, you know, edge rusher. Um and then maybe safety's third or middle linebacker, or defensive tackle. Like, I just thought it was really annoying that he did that. And listen, not to take anything away from him, immensely talented player. Uh, obviously, you know, he was second on the Jets in sacks. Like, that as a safety just shows his value. So I'm with you. Talented guy, but I'm like, get out of town. I I'm over that. You don't want to be here. You know, you're with us or you're against us. That's kind of the deal in sports. No, that I that part I can understand. Like, I, I that's why I felt like, it was inevitable that he was going to be moved, but I like the deal for Seattle because I think Seattle is a team that is, uh, you know, in that contender conversation. Are they are they a hundred percent there? Who knows? But like, yeah. you know, a lot of things can break either way. Somebody can get injured, and you can be, you know, in, in contention spot, and that's where they are. They have Russell Wilson, so I don't mind the move for Seattle. Do you feel like you? I mean, you got a haul for Jamal Adams, so you got to be yeah, happy. Yeah, I mean, that. now Joel, you just said it perfectly. Somebody gets hurt, maybe things improve. Aaron Rodgers goes down or whatever. Well, what if Russell Wilson gets hurt? He he has two new starting offensive linemen on the right side, right guard and right tackle. And I'm looking at this team like, I mean, yeah, they were pretty good last year, nearly made the uh, NFC Championship game, but Russ goes down, Joy. 
and they are an abomination. They're like a three or four win team. So then the Jets pick next year is looking amazing. And I don't want to wish ill on Russell Wilson. I know you and Colin are very friendly with Russ. And I'm sure I gave him a shout out for the newborn baby. Uh, I'm a fan of Russ Wilson. But for the Jets, I think you've got to do that trade every day of the week. What did you make of Le'Veon Bell? Now, I, I am a Le'Veon fan. I wish you to stay yeah. with the Steelers. I feel like that was a better spot for him. But, you know, he, he feels a little... It's a, it was a weird interaction, actually, because he, he yeah. it seemed like he was angry at him, but then he was like, we talked on the phone. So it was like, yeah. if we talk on the phone, I personally, like, if I have a phone conversation with someone to settle something, I don't need to go to Twitter. So I thought it, the whole interaction was weird. That, that's, that's it right there. We've seen a lot of this the last, like, four or five months, like, people taking their beefs to social media. It doesn't make sense, especially if you're a pro athlete. We saw it with Drew Brees, right? So a couple players, after Drew Brees made a statement about uh, the, nas- the national anthem, a couple of players went after him and other ones who were smart, like called him up and were like, dude, what, what are you doing? Right. Like be smart. You're not seeing it the right way. And I kind of wish Le'Veon and him had ironed it out off social media. Uh, as we both, I think we both agreed, like Twitter kind of sucks. It's, I, I would say a lot stronger stuff about it. It serves a uh, purpose, but yeah, in general, it's not a very positive place. Yeah, it's very negative, and I think Le'Veon probably felt like an idiot because he caped up for Jamal Adams. Right. Oh, yeah, we got him. He wants to stay in town, and then next thing you know, Jamal Adams shreds the organization and gets traded, and then Le'Veon kind of looks like an idiot. But uh, listen, I I do agree with you. I'm a Le'Veon Bell fan. This is one of the best backs in the league. He should be fresh because we know he didn't do anything last year, (laughs) and then he took the year off prior with the contract negotiations. He should be in line for a big year. It really comes down to your guy, former Dolphins coach Adam Gaze, who, I I don't know, Joy, you you spent more time with him in Miami uh, dealing with him. I know one of your, uh, a couple of your buddies, uh, Sedano specifically, we talk about Gaze a lot. And um, let's just say I'm, I'm not a huge fan right now, but I was once optimistic. Well, so that was going to be my next question because I am not a big Gase fan. Uh, I mean, he did, you know, get the Dolphins to the playoffs, so I got to give him credit for that. Ryan Tannehill, which I did not believe was going to happen. But, like, you know, I, I come from Pittsburgh, right? So I'm also a Steelers fan. You know, I have some Steelers loyalty. So even though I don't have these expectations of the Dolphins, I don't like the idea of, like, making the playoffs as a successful season. Like, you're trying to win a championship. Like, yes, you can grow if you have a young team, you know, and you're trying to build, like, making the playoffs, okay, and then, like, you get a playoff win, like, building something. But, like, so that to be the measure of success to me and then, like, lose in your first wild card game is, is not a really, like, an accomplishment. Like, you had a nice season. Okay, great. So when he went to the Jets, I was like – like enjoy i don't know what to tell you i, I don't know yours yeah like good luck i guess i i just to me i feel like the sign of a good coach aside obviously from the winning which i didn't hold last year against him sam darnold's got the kissing disease and like whatever you know what i mean <laughs> so i i didn't I, as soon as that happened it was like all right jet season's done for but i'm not going to count this against him right right but this jamal adams thing to me is kind of like a sign of dysfunction like you, you got to be on the same page with your players. And, and, and even if he does want to leave, and if he's not happy or he wants his contract or whatever, like, I feel like communication solves these situations. And if you're not a good communicator, it's hard to establish a good culture. And I, I don't think that that translates to winning. I think culture is the perfect word, Joy. I mean, he had issues with players in Miami. You remember it ended pretty ugly there. Uh, and then you go to the Jets, and it's kind of the same thing. And again, I want to give him the benefit of the doubt. Joy, this is one of the craziest stats you'll hear uh, come out of my mouth. Adam Gaze, last three years, right, 48 NFL games. He's had a backup start 24 of those. He's had a backup quarterback for half of his game. So is it fair to judge the results? I don't know. But listen, there is, you know, when you when I made the decision, you know, to move west with the family, we did like a pros and cons. I'm sure you did the same thing, yeah. right? And pros were like, oh, my gosh, Los Angeles, the weather's amazing. No more shoveling snow and blah, blah, blah. When you weigh the pros and cons of Adam Gaze right now, like the cons are really outweighing the pros. And it's like, dude, if he doesn't win this year, I think you got to look at like, if he doesn't win nine or 10 games, Brady's gone. Brady's gone. Like you got to have a shot. I don't believe in the bills. Your Dolphins, I think still rebuilding. Uh, You know, we could talk to or Fitz, but I, I just, my sense is that if Gaze doesn't win like nine or 10 games and they come close to the playoffs, he's toast. Yeah, I, I would agree with that. Staying in the AFC East, 
I think it's up to six players now have opted out yeah. for the Patriots. Which, like, for whatever reason, anyone wants to opt out of this season in any league, I'm I'm not judging anybody. Like, yeah. we don't know what people's home situations are like or if they're just stressed out themselves and we're all dealing with unprecedented times. So whatever your reason is, I'm cool with it no matter what. But it is kind of interesting that there's that many and high-profile Patriots players sitting out. What do yeah, you think? Hightower is one of their best defenders. Yeah. Um, but what was interesting, Joy, is, like, if you look at the players that are out, I think they had – two or three in the trenches. And, you know, I've been talking about this on, on social a little bit, but when you look at COVID, one of the pre-existing symptoms is obesity. And I'm not calling offensive linemen and defensive linemen obese, sure. but by the definition of obesity, you know, if you're over 300 pounds, it's, you're almost automatically obese, even if you're a fit football player running around. And I wonder, we saw the Chiefs offensive lineman back out. He's got like a doctorate degree. I wonder if doctors are starting to talk to these players and say, yo, like this is a high risk. Um, now, I did see some comical stuff, not that COVID's funny at all, that these Patriots players backing out, if you save their salary, all of a sudden Jadavian Clowney becomes an option for Bill Belichick on defense. Uh, I, I don't know if that comes to fruition. Uh, they did get Cam Newton. I think that was a good value pick for uh Bill Belichick, and now if he goes after Clowney, that's another guy uh, that could get interesting. So I'm still wait and see on the Patriots, but as of now, I don't think they're a playoff team, Joy. Oh, no, no, I don't think they're a playoff team either. Even with Cam, like, I think they're going to win more games than they would with Jared Stidham, and I'm certainly more interested in them now with Cam Newton than I was with Jared Stidham, but I I felt like this was not the year for the Patriots. I just want Cam to do well. Um, And even now with these players sitting out, if they do end up sitting out, you know, yeah. that's that's not going to be on Cam, you know, if he's in shootouts right. now because, you know, a third of their defense is out. Um, so I, I really just want to see Cam do well and see what he can do in general. Yeah, I, I'm just I, I'm curious. I was just thinking about it out loud, like in my head. So the Patriots have been pretty dominant under Belichick, obviously, for two decades. They're great at covering the spread. Um, I'm just curious, like, is he going to not release who's playing every week. You know, he likes to hide that stuff. Remember, he'd have a running back. He had a running back who like had like 200 yards against the Colts. Then he overslept the alarm clock, you know, missed practice. And then Belichick didn't tell anybody until like the day of, oh, he's not even playing. Like, I just wonder if Belichick is going to have like a, a real deep squad and not unveil until the last moment who's playing and who's not. He's going to try to keep it a mystery. He's always up to those tricks. He's got some shenanigans. That hoodie. Yeah. So sticking with COVID, um, Marlins are, there's like, I don't even know how many positive tests now. The good thing is that the Phillies have not tested positive. Right. But there's, you know, this is what, this is what was expected. Now people are kind of overreacting to it. To me, like, obviously this is not, I feel like they are. So I'm going to ask you if if you think they are, because I feel like there were going to be positive tests. If it was in the bubble, I would be more concerned. Right. right. Because like this is a very controlled situation. Everyone's being tested. There's tons of rules, tons of regulations, uh, very serious social distancing. Everyone has to wear masks. So if that's a problem, then like that's a real problem. But if yeah. you're not in the bubble uh, of the, the, what, what do we have? Four million cases in the country. Like, of course, there's going to be yeah. positive tests. So there, there were contingency plans for this. So I don't I'm like, obviously, it's not good. But I'm not panicking about it. Do you think that I'm like I'm not looking at it the right way? I, I guess I would get. Uh, I would ask you to define panicking. Like, uh, is panic stop the season, or is it just like something a little below that? Well, I think that the reaction from the media is like this is not going to work, and like now it didn't look like the Marlins weren't in it weren't in it to begin with, right? Like, <laughs> we knew that uh, they never yeah. are. But like no, that really shouldn't matter because this could happen to any team. Right. Right. So to me, I'm like, I'm not panicking because I expect this to happen. So if I expect it to happen and I'm not Rob Manfred, I'm sure Rob Manfred assumed that at one point or another, a team was going to have um, a spread of tests that were positive. Yeah, I guess. Yeah, I would agree with you. No need to panic. I just think, Joy, this is kind of a leadership issue. Like, uh, you know, I don't want to go off on a political tangent, but, you know, in our country, we're not handling COVID well at all. No, that's not the bubble. Great job. MLS in the bubble, Premier League over over in Europe. Like a lot of leagues are doing well in a bubble. America as a whole, pretty friggin' terrible. Yes. Disappointing. And I think Major League Baseball, Joy's going through the same thing. Like they had, what, a 100-page manual for how to handle this. And the first big blowout, 
They screw it up. Like, this is really pathetic. Now, a lot of people are saying, well, this could extrapolate to the NFL, but there's not the same travel for NFL and Major League Baseball. I've seen reports that NFL teams are thinking of flying in the day of the game, so there's not even an overnight stay. You just go right to the stadium, back on the plane, and out. Um, but Major League Baseball, like, Joy, this is like the first round, okay? This is like the first round of a 12-round boxing fight, and Major League Baseball's already been, like, knocked down and is, like, kind of on the ropes early. And I hope we finish the season, you and I, working for Fox. I'm, I'm definitely rooting uh, for baseball to happen. But at the moment, I, it's a little disappointment for Rob Manfred. I think, uh, yeah, I would say, like, the bubbles working to me makes sense, right? Like, yeah. they should work. That was the whole point of us, like, stay at home and social distance and wear the mask and, like, not go out. So the bubble makes sense to me. Like, you're in a bubble. It's, if there's no COVID in the bubble, similar to countries that don't have it, then yeah. you can't spread it because it's not there. <laughs> so, like, so I know... I know you're like obviously smart about this. I, I just need to ask: Do you have any friends personally who have gotten COVID? Because oh yeah, I know lots of people I know, have it. That have lots it. of people like you text with who have gotten it. Yeah, I mean oh, like wow. not lots, like not hundreds, obviously, but like okay. I would say probably a dozen people. Oh geez, okay. See, I guess you're a little younger. You know, you know, you're hanging out with a crowd that goes out. Not like little... not people that are around yeah. me, but like I right. know people who have had it, who had it early. Um, oh. people who have tested positive, who have been asymptomatic. Um, for the most part, it's been like split as far as like if people have symptoms or not. But yeah, I mean, people people have it like or have had it and gotten over it. But it's, it's mostly young people. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, I don't there's not one person that I text with who I'm like super close to. I know friends of friends and family members of friends. Um, and and it, it just it seems like if you live on social media, like a lot of people do in right. 2020, you know, not much else to do. It's like the worst thing in the world. But then if you go into your little bubble and you're wearing a mask and being smart and not like going indoors anywhere, it's like, you're okay. And I, I just, I feel like that's impossible if you're not in the bubble for baseball and college football. First of all, college football, Joy. There's like, I mean, if you're gonna send kids to live in a dorm on campus, and they're not in a bubble dorm. And then they got to go to the cafeteria with other kids. And then they're going to hang out and go to party. Like college football seems like no shot. College basketball, like forget about it. I can't imagine that happening. But yeah, I'm, I don't, I'm I don't know good. how the college thing is, is going to work. I, I would not be want to be in that situation to have to make that decision because it's just kids, but also like it's so big, like the ripple effect of not having a college season. And then you've got these guys who are trying to make it to the league, like that affects yeah. the next five, 10 years of their life, their future. You've got kids in high school who are trying to get scholarships. Like it's really, people just talk about sports in this you know, macro sense, like sports doesn't matter. It's not that important. It's like, guys, in the, when you're talking about life and death, no, of course not. But when you're talking about economics, you're talking about um, education, like some of these kids, most of these kids, overwhelmingly these kids are not going to make it to the NFL. So they are actually getting a free ride to school based off of their football skill, which now they're not going to be able to exhibit. Mm -hmm. Like there are a lot of effects in, in economically and you know for the future of a lot of people that is affected by sports not happening. So I don't speak about it flippantly when I say I'm not yeah. optimistic about it. But I think I mean, one thing that the NFL the has that that's an advantage is they are going to be able to watch MLB. Yeah, I mean, I, you would think so. I mean, I, hopefully the Yankees, Yankees and Dodgers are my two teams that I follow. But just one other quick note on college football. I know everybody's going to be like, oh, it's it, – Joy and Jason, it's 21-year-olds. They're going to be fine. It's less about that. It's about like 25,000 kids on campus. And if there's an outbreak and, I don't know, 5,000 kids get it, let's just say 200 of them need to go to the hospital. Joy, like a small college town in Podunk, Mississippi or Tennessee or Georgia – that hospital is going to be overwhelmed because they've got the local old people who are in the hospital. And that's where it gets a little scary. And I have some ER friends out here in LA and it ain't pretty right now. Like they're, they're, I'm texting them every weekend. Like, how are you? Are you holding up? They're like, we had an outbreak of the doctors at the hotel, at, at the hospital, sorry. And the doctors then couldn't work. And then they're just overflowing with patients. And it, that's where it gets scary. It's less about, oh, 500 people died. Like, obviously that matters. But it's the ramifications of when the doctors have to say, we need him off a ventilator, 
this person's young and we got to put them on. Like nobody wants to make that decision. No. And that's what, that's what shutting down was all about to begin with. Right. Like yeah. taking care of making sure that the hospitals weren't overwhelmed. But for me with college sports, the bigger picture is, is the back half of what you mentioned. Like, yes, obviously these college kids are, are not as vulnerable as older people, but these college kids live in communities. Like these schools are not out in the, just like in some isolated middle of nowhere. They live in, they're in cities where other people live. And then those, they go out into the city, of course, to get food or, go for a run or do whatever they're doing. Like they are going to be around other people. They're not in a bubble. So yeah, I mean, it's super complicated, but um, I'm, I'm trying to remain optimistic part, about all of it. I know you were a party animal. I love to go out in college and I'm telling you, Joy, like if I was a college kid now, I would think exactly like that. I'm going to be fine. What am I not going to party? I'm not going to go out drinking. Well, like, like nothing's and, open. So that is a good thing. Right. Like that's going to prevent a lot of it. But yeah. you know, there are people, people still doing house parties and like, I, I just don't know how you control it. Hopefully, like you said, leadership has some answer, you know, within the next few months and you know, we all, we all make it through this. But speaking yeah. of the bubble, one of the bubbles, the NBA bubble, they're starting in a few days. I, I had no idea what this was going to look like. I didn't know how it was going to work. I'm super impressed with how it's gone so far. And uh, to me, my like biggest skepticism of it was, other than obviously managing COVID, what's it going to look like? Like basketball is such an intimate sport. You have fans literally on the court right yeah. there. So what's it going to sound like? Is it going to feel empty? And like you're in these big gaping arenas and, and, and facilities. I think they've done an amazing job. Uh, yeah, listen, Adam Silver uh, gets raked across the coals by a certain side on social media. He's been tremendous. And the NBA has, you know, their owners skew a little younger. They've got the tech money and they are really ahead of the curve with how they're handling this. The NBA bubble, uh, Joy, they, it's been tremendous. You know, you remove the Lou Williams nonsense. You know, we could go there if you want to. And a couple other uh, the the kid Holmes on the Kings who crossed a line to pick up food. Like, okay, fine. Silly stuff like that. But overall, no outbreaks. And like you said, the product has been tremendous. I, I don't know about you. Like, I'm very excited for Thursday when the games matter. Scrimmages are one thing, but I'm curious to see how the teams do, like, when the games actually count. Well, that's like, to me, yes, I'm super, super excited for Thursday. But I'm, I'm finding it. I picked the Clippers at the beginning of the season, right? Before right. Before all this happened. And I still feel like the Clippers are the deepest team, which is why I'm still with the Clippers. But I also feel like there's a certain element of this with COVID, which obviously to this point has not mattered, thankfully, gratefully, uh, but also maybe injuries and like how certain players are dealing with not having fans and being in this unique situation and mentally being away from their families or being away from their girl or like just, you know, being essentially at eternal basketball camp. Yeah. Uh, how they're going to handle that. So I think it's really hard to predict a winner this year. Yeah, no, I'm with you. Um, and, and I had this discussion. I do some writing for FoxSports.com. And I, uh, uh, you know, I talked to the guys and I said, think about this. Like, Joy, 10 years ago, did you think you would be living in L.A. working for Fox? I mean, five years ago, that was hard for me to believe. Right. So how are we supposed to, as humans, project what's going to happen tomorrow, the next week, the next year? Like, it's almost impossible. And I'm kind of with you on the Clippers are maybe the team to beat. But I, I'm picking the Lakers. I do think losing Rondo, losing Bradley, those are those are significant losses. You, when you replace them with guys like Deion Waiters and J.R. Smith, who just got to the team, I know they're pros. Obviously, they're veterans. They've been around. But, like, the Lakers are going to be trotting out some units, Joy, that have never been on the court together for a regular season game. That That's a real thing that's going to happen. Uh, and, and, frankly, I don't know how they're going to react to that. But uh, I think the Milwaukee Bucks are actually hurt more than anyone. Because they were rolling, right? They uh, Dominant team, offensively, defensively, all the stats. And the big thing is they were going to have home court advantage uh, in the East without question. I think they could be in jeopardy here a little bit um, in the East and then certainly in the finals. How much uh, – well, I guess – when it comes to Lou Williams, I have my own opinion about it. But what what did you think when you heard the story? Wait, wait, let's hear yours first. Uh, I mean, sure. I don't like. I think it's irresponsible of him to take the picture inside. Like, just don't, just like, don't take the picture. And also, send someone else in to get him. Like, there's nothing yeah, wrong that's a great with point. you <laughs> getting wings from there um, or eating from there. But just send some, like, you have to be aware of the optics, right? Like, I have yeah. zero problem with any of it, except for you got to be aware of the optics, right? Like, we're all in this business. We all do stuff that we don't post on social media. 
plenty. I mean, you'll you'll find me ghost on social media for an entire weekend. Do you think I'm sitting on my couch doing nothing? No, I'm doing stuff I don't want to post on social media. Like it's not real, right? So like, but you have to be aware of the presence of optics. So like, I love Lou Williams. I think he's great. I think he is, uh, he's one of the most valuable pieces on any of these rosters that are in championship contention. He's a walking bucket. So it's not, I'm, I, it doesn't, like, I don't question his character, like his intentions or whatever. Like not, none of that matters to me. I was just like, you know, send someone else in to get the wings. My, my favorite part of it was the rapper uh, Harlow took a picture, right, with Lou. He's got a mask on. And then, it, then he tried to cover up and say, oh, no, it was an old picture. What, like anybody wore a mask in a strip club before the last like two months? Get I actually here. did. I actually did. I went to 11 in Miami uh, in, was it, what? was it January? It was January, early February. Um, Cause I was in Miami for a bachelorette party and my friend has a company that makes face shields. So, okay. so like not completely non COVID related, COVID had not uh, hit us yet. Um, and we had face masks on in the strip club. So it does happen, oh but, <laughs> but oh, that wow. mask, that's a, that's a first. that okay. mask was a, it was not a face shield. It was a mask and it had an, the NBA logo on it. Yeah. I don't know. Anyways, uh, like I'm kind of with you and not the biggest deal. Very funny. Um, I guess, what is it? The lemon pepper chicken wings. Is that what lemon it is? Lemon pepper like, barbecue. Chicken barbecue. Wings. That's like a thing. Cause I was reading about Damian Lillard, right? He turned 30. They had a big birthday party for him in the hotel and lemon pepper barbecue wings were like the number one thing. I love lemon pepper that. wings. Have you ever had lemon I mean, pepper? I think I might have, but oh my like God. my favorite Wing thing. Stop lemon pepper wings are okay. amazing. Like I, I love lemon pepper. I don't know about lemon pepper barbecue. I'd have to try it, but yeah, no, no, no. It's a whole, it's a whole thing. I get it. I get it. I'm just th- like, to me, it's just optics. Like, you know, this is going to happen. You know, once that picture's taken, it's going to get tweeted out and you know what people are going to say. Yeah. I think if anything, maybe the Clippers teammates were a little jealous uh, that he got to go out of the bubble. I know he, it was for, you know, a sad cause, right. obviously. But the fact that he's able to get wings, pop into a strip club, hang out with this rapper, like, eh, you got a good night, Lou. I guess I'll be doing one of those in like five months. An, an expensive night, $150,000 for those wings. So, yeah. Uh, but, I, you know, again, like, I'm, he's fine. And it seems like Clippers, the Clippers are supporting him. So, yeah. Uh, we'll see. All right. Well, thanks, Jay Mac. I really appreciate it. Thanks for hopping on the pod. Uh, whenever thanks, this is over, we'll get you in the actual studio. Can't on, wait. On, I know, man. I can't wait. Please, please, God, <laughs> when this is over. Please get it together, people. Wear your mask. Wear a mask. Oh, yeah. um, but thanks. Good luck with the Jets this year. Uh, we'll talk again soon. And check out uh, Jay Mac's show on Fox Sports Radio, 10 to 1 Eastern on Saturdays and Sundays or just Saturday? Just Saturday. Just Saturday. Yeah. All right. Thanks, J-Mac. Thanks, Joy. Take it easy. You too.